Now I noticed the uh, teaser video, uh, a, a little less people um, watched it this, this month or this week. I think we only had about six views. Um, some people may get uh, caught up in that, but if you um, listen to it, you probably got, you know which verses we're going to and what we're talking about. But when we hear the term Antichrist, almost everyone's mind goes to Revelation and the battle where the Antichrist and the false prophets are raising war against believers. How many of you, is that where your mind automatically goes when you hear Antichrist, right? We, we go to the, the battle in Armageddon and we paint a picture of what or who this person or being could be. Um, religious scholars have spent many years researching and looking for an idea or a symbol that will help them recognize where the Antichrist will come from and what are, what are the indications, etc. I feel that sometimes that we let our imaginations go wild and we make extreme opinions or come up with wild pictures of what that being or person may look like. Just look at how we portrayed Satan all of these years. Going by the pictures I've seen, he has a black goatee, horns on his head, wears a bright red leotard, and carries a pitchfork. Is that really what we think an angel cast down from heaven looks like? If that is what Satan looks like, nobody would have a problem avoiding any of his temptations at all. As a matter of fact, if that's what he really looked like, people would, have, would be avoiding him just because they might think he was crazy. But the problem is that Satan and his temptations come in many forms. And most of them are very enticing and easily lead people astray. Mostly because the temptation is exactly what their hearts want to do in the first place. Satan is able to play to your wants and desires and will tell you that they are all right, despite what God's word may say. So if Satan is not like the artists or what the artists have come up with, what about the Antichrist? We're going to look at 1 John chapter 2 verses 18 to 24. 1 John chapter 2 verses 18 to 24. Dear tri children, this is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Okay, I may have misled you a little bit today. We are not going to talk about the Antichrist. We are going to talk about Antichrist. Notice there is a difference. Yes, as you see in this passage, it says many of Antichrists have come, or have already come, and there are even many among us today. I, don't, I do want to clarify the Antichrist in Revelation will have a much bigger impact and will stand out above all the Antichrists that have come before him. But we're going to look at what John is actually talking about in today's passage. Now, how many of you knew that there were many Antichrists? Ah, so I think when you see the description that John is laying out, you will understand and agree that there are plenty of antichrists. I think when you see the description and how John lays it, it's going to make it very clear. First, John states that we are in the last hours, or actually John is saying to them that they are in the last hours or the last days. 
And we, all of us, are still living in the last days because the last days are considered the time from when Jesus ascended until in, when he ascended into heaven until the time he returns. Thus, we are living in the last days until Jesus returns again. So we are all living in the last days and we have been ever since Jesus ascended into heaven. Then John states that the Antichrist has come out of the body of believers and by doing so, they never really belonged to the body of believers. Now these verses are talking about people who attended the church but never really believed that Jesus was the Son of God or that Jesus was divine. Instead, they attended church for all the wrong reasons and we've been talking about this a lot. They attended out of family tradition, for social connections, out of habit, whatever the reason, it was for the wrong purpose. So, e so some even believed in God, but they wouldn't accept that Jesus was the Son of God. There's actually denominations who believe in God, but do not believe that Jesus was the Son of God or that Jesus was the Christ. Basically, all of these different scenarios of people I just mentioned were against Jesus or against Christ. And so if you are against, another word for that or, uh, is anti. So if you're against, you're anti. If you're against Jesus or if you're against the Christ, you're anti-Christ. Therefore, they were anti-Christ. John told them that if they were against Jesus and they didn't really believe, then they were against what Christians stood for also. And John then pointed out that as these people left the church, but he is basically saying them leaving the church is okay because they were never really part of the church to begin with because they were anti-Christ. Now the second part of this passage is talking about the anointing of the Holy One and that believers, true believers, know the truth. And since we know the truth, we need to be aware of the liars that are not part of us. Who is the liar? Anyone who claims that Jesus is not the Son of God. John says, he goes to the level of saying that if you don't know the Son, then you can't know the Father. And we see this mentioned a lot of times in Scripture where he says, if you, don't know the, if you don't believe in me, you can't believe in the Father. If you don't believe in the Father, you can't believe in me. So now we have a better idea of what John is warning us about here. I think we can all probably think of many antichrists that we are around, and we're probably around some of them every day. Now to get a, a, a clearer view, it could be if it's the media or different groups with their agenda against the church or religion, they would be antichrist. If it is a professor or a teacher in our schools, it may be coworkers or families or friends. If they're against Jesus, they're anti-Christ. We are probably around people every day who are against Jesus and what Christians stand for. We are surrounded by Antichrist, as John describes. We are surrounded by them on a regular basis. It's part of the world that we live in. But notice the big warning here is, the, is talking about the Antichrist that are in our churches. People who are attending for all the wrong reasons, who don't really believe on what they hear on a Sunday morning. They don't believe what they hear in a Bible study. They are just here to keep up appearances. Their heart is not on God when they come to worship. They are more worried about what, peop what the people around them are doing. In their minds, they are judging others and thinking more highly of themselves. That's not the attitude for worship, nor is that the attitude that Jesus gave himself up for on the cross. Now, as we talk about these antichrists that John and the church were battling during the time that John wrote this letter, it makes every one of us think, what is our reason for being here today? If we examine ourselves, then we all know that we, there are areas in which we fall short. I know that I do on a regular basis. I do not stand up here and try to say that I'm better than any of you. But when we see John addressing the church, about those who have fallen away and that if they fell away then they never really belonged to them to begin with it can kind of be disheartening 
Every year that I have been a pastor, there are people who have stopped attending the church for one reason or another. Did they really belong to the body of believers like John is stating? Or has life just overwhelmed them? And honestly, if life has overwhelmed them, does that mean that Satan won that battle? As a pastor, it's tough not to be discouraged by those who no longer attend for whatever reason. So it's really important for each one of us to truly know why we come to church. Is our heart right with God? And do we believe in Jesus is the Son? When we see John's definition of Antichrist, we pr probably all can name a few in our lives on a regular basis. It just goes to prove that we live in a very precarious situation in today's world. But if we truly believe, we do have the anointing of the Holy Spirit to help protect us from the lies that the world is trying to tell us. It is a challenge knowing not everyone believes what you believe. And it's a, it's a world that we face on a regular basis. But realize, throughout Scripture, you hear about Antichrist. And we all get caught up on Armageddon when we realize Antichrist is talking about anyone who's anti-Jesus or anti-the Son of God. Anti-Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, and we look at your letter from, from John talking to the people about what to expect. And that he even shares that, hey, there are people here, and we definitely think about the church of the time there, how many of them didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God. It was very prevalent in the time of this letter, but it's still very prevalent in the world today. Where people don't believe Jesus is the Son of God, do not believe that He's the Messiah, does not believe that He is the Christ. They are Antichrist. Let's not get caught up in what we think of the final battle of Armageddon and what we are expecting. We need to realize that there are plenty around us on a regular basis. We need to know that the Holy Spirit is protecting us because as believers, we know the truth. People will try to convince you otherwise. People will try to come up with different arguments. As long as we know what God's Word says, we understand what it's telling us and how it is protecting us and how when we accept the Holy Spirit, He is inside us to protect us from these lies. So the question is, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe Jesus is the Messiah? Do you believe that He is and was the Christ? That is what's going to protect us from the Antichrist that we encounter. May the Lord give you strength and power in His precious name. Amen.